So Paul says, fight so that you can lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life means prosperity. Eternal life means sound earth. Eternal life means success. Eternal life means progress. Eternal life means happy marital life. If you are not seeing any of this, it is not because eternal life is fake. It is not because the church is a scam. It is because you have not fought the fight that will make eternal life to be a reality. Our God, who is our Father, is called the man of war. How do we earn the battle over to God now? Quickly, I've dropped about some few things in our hand. Number one, you need a proven new back experience. Number two, walk in obedience. Number three, walk in the fear of God. Number four, engage in the mystery of praise. Amen. Choir, the Lord bless you. Lift those hands and let's bless the name of the Lord this morning. Come on, give the God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. He has kept us from January. Here we are. At the end of November, kept by God, kept by His grace. Lero bredia zemopedi kapo bila dia jarosh kegade zeza malios amblo brekete pelia de zuzema lopopidi jadia. We say thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. We you thank him for all of his blessings. All he has done. All he has been. Give him the praise and give him the glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We have just come to say thank you, our Father. Bredi zuzemio peli jagba brute pali. Alo rozo tokopedia jangadia zoteleroch. Thank you for all of your blessings and all of your faithfulness. We say to you be the glory, Father. To you be the praise of God. We celebrate you for all of your faithfulness to us. Take all the glory. And blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Thank you, our Father. You have been so good. You have been so kind. Your grace and your mercy has been our portion, not judgment for whatever error or mistake. Thank you for safekeep, for protection. We give you the glory. We do my Quickly, the subject, the topic of our subject of our discussion today is the Lord shall fight for me. Amen. Say with me, the Lord shall fight for me. Fight for me. Say it again. The Lord shall fight for me. And get ready. We'll be having a time of praise. You will dance like you have not danced before. And before the service is over, you are taking testimony of your victory. Please, as a way of introduction, understand. You know it before, but let me remind you. We live in a world of battles. What did I say? You don't... You, it's not that you should like to fight. You must be ready to fight. Or else, you become a victim. Live to that out of now. From today, you will never be a victim again. You will never be defeated again. It's a world of battles where everyone has the responsibility to fight. Or else you won't have access to what is your right. You fight to gain access to your right. Or else you don't have it. Look at it in Deuteronomy 2.24. He said, rise up, take your journey. And cross over. Say, so rise you up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into your hand. That's God speaking. I have given into your hand. God says, I have given you. Sion, the Amorite king of Eshbon and his land, 
I have given you. But it won't get to your hand that way. I have given it between my hand and your hand. You have a duty. For you to drop in your hand, begin to possess it. As you fight, as you contend, as you battle. That God has given it, if you don't fight for it, it will still drop. Lift out of now. Everything that God has given to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, it will drop in your hand today. So it's a word of battle. First, first, first Timothy chapter 6, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Look at it. Very powerful. Paul speaking. Amen. He said, fight. That's Paul. The great, the, the great man, the, great, the, the greatest in the instrument after Christ. He said, fight the good fight of faith. When you do that, then you'll be able to lay hold on eternal life. Christ gave us eternal life at redemption. But that eternal life that we receive that new birth will never become a reality. We never make, will never be made manifest until the believer accepts the responsibility to fight. So Paul says, fight so that you can lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life means prosperity. Eternal life means sound health. Eternal life means success. Eternal life means progress. Eternal life means happy marital life. If you are not seeing any of this, it is not because eternal life is fake. It is not because the church is a scam. It is because you have not fought the fight that will make eternal life to be a reality. Fight the good fight of faith. Then, you'll be able to take hold, you'll be able to lay hold, you'll be able to place your hand on eternal life. Or else it will remain a mirage. Or else it will become like fake, like it's not real. Hear me, we are not deceiving people in church. But each one that we experience the beauty of this life that Christ offers must take the responsibility to fight it. If you don't like to fight, friends, this life of God is not for you. Amen. Is somebody with me this morning? But the good news is this. Well, let me first give us the one that might not be too good. There are battles, and a lot of battles in life, they are beyond our strength as human. They are beyond our strength as men. But the good news now is that we have a God. Our God, who is our Father. He is called the man of war. Exodus 15.3 His name is the man of war. People think God is gentle. Oh, you better know this God. His name is the man of war. Is that the Lord is a man of gentleness. A man of gentility. He is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So when you say the Lord, you are just saying man of war. Every time you say the Lord, you are saying the man of war. You are triggering our God to his warfare dimension. And when you are talking about warfare, you are not talking about warfare, you are not talking about gentility. You are not talking about someone looking morose. You are talking about aggression. You are talking about a man that is weird, a man that is fierce, a man that is at his work, heartless. Israel declared war against, against Hamas, who stayed at Gaza. And after that war was declared, children have died. Children have died. Women have died. Is it that they want to kill women and children? No, but they declared war. It is war. This is not play for time. War. And they said, this is war we are coming for. Please, excuse us. Leave the place. When we come in, we are not, we are merciless. We are heartless. If you are too gentle, you can't enjoy this thing. I newly married and we sat, we slept on the bed on, in the front of my house and we are doing love in Tokyo as new husband and wife. We just brought our mattress outside on the veranda we are doing love in Tokyo. And I gave one boy a table to do. I was in Jebu Ogbere, where you know how to undo yourself or else you are go gone. And then the guy that I gave 
came to me and said, where's the table? I was still on the bed with my wife. Where's the table? And he was, began to say something I don't understand. I've learned that when they speak to you that way in that place, you don't, you don't, you don't take it for light. So I stood up. I said, wait for me there. And I was going with my blue. I said, wait for me there. If you don't die now, I'm not saying by God. I was going with that anger and with that anointing, with my fist. And my wife pulled me back. Oh, now, you're a man of God. Don't kill anybody. I turned back. And I said, will you leave me now or you are the first to die? Now, I was not talking to my wife at that point. I didn't even see her. I knew the fight I had to fight to survive. There was a, a time before I married her that all the pastors of Pentecostal churches were all man of one just stood and was just pushing our blood. Nothing, no sickness, was just pushing our blood. Until he ran out of town and then the blood ceased. He came back again, blood was flowing. He ran out again, flowing. He ceased. The other one was just going and then one car just jammed him. He went to spiritual dead him, he came back and another car just jammed him. He ran from town. And now one sickness just came upon him, was just reducing. No explanation, was just reducing. Nothing touched me. I never had a headache one day. I was bulldozing every devil out. So I looked at, hey, 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 hey. If you don't stop there now, I'll kill you first. I was not talking to her. I was talking to the devil. I went after the devil. I didn't get him again. He had run away. She distracted me. He ran away. So I came back. And I, I came back with the mind that, okay, let's continue our love in Tokyo. And I didn't see my wife on the bed again. So I was looking for her. I was looking for her. And I saw her in the corner, one corner of the room. And she was sobbing. We are just about two months in wedding, in marriage. I said, honey, what's it? What's wrong? Why are you crying? I left you. We are having a nice time. What's wrong? Why are you crying? He said, he, he, I said, what was it? He, he, you, you said to me, I said, what did I say? You said, you will kill me. I will die. I said, me? I said, no, I didn't. I didn't. He said, no, you said it. I said, oh, 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 oh. When, I said, ah, ah, when you see me in that realm, in that, de- in that dimension, just stay off. Stay off. Don't, don't stand the way because I need to. I said, this is how I've been surviving before you came. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Hear me now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, every battle that has been raging against your life, every battle that has been drowning you, every battle that has been putting your life under, I decree they go under for you today. In the name of Jesus. That is the God we serve. And the good thing is that he never returns from any battle defeated. He's a man of war, no battle. All we need is turn the battle to him. He has a nature of taking over the battle of his children. But if he will take over the battle, you need to turn it over to him. So all we need to know is, how do I turn the battle over to him? How do I end the battle? You, you, you are not to be fighting the battles. You are to watch the battle. Second, second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Look at what it says. The devil is going today. And the devil will weep today. For any trouble he has given you, more than double will be given back to him. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. So by God's design, you are not the one to fight the battle. He wants to fight. He said, set yourselves. That is, there is how to place yourself, position yourself, that the battle will, handle, will get back to his hand. He said, stand east, you'll be watching. And see as I fight and I bring salvation to you. That's the design. Isaiah 49. Somebody here with me this morning? Hear me, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, you will never lose again in life. Isaiah 49, verse 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus say the Lord. Thus say the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prayer of the terrible shall be delivered. For I, I, the man of war, the Lord is my name. 
will contend with him that contended with thee. I will take over the battle. And I guarantee your salvation. No matter how mighty they are, no matter how terrible they, they are, when I take over and I contend, I guarantee your salvation. Look at what will happen to them. Not only that to be saved, he said, I will feed them that contend or oppress you with their own blood, with their own flesh. I will cause them to be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. So what is not the problem? Why are you now, why are you now getting defeated? So when I'm the one contending on your behalf, you will be saved. And you will watch as they will be eating their own flesh. Hear me now. I don't care where the battle has come from. I don't care for how long it has been raging. But every arm that has been stretched against anyone here, they will eat their own flesh today. They will drink their own blood today. If that is true, I will hear your loudest amen. How do we hand the battle over to God now? Quickly, I'll drop about from some few things in our hand. And then we rise. Number one. You need a proven new birth experience. A proven, genuine, true new birth experience. Amen. When an individual comes into a covenant with God, God becomes committed to everything that concerns him. Including his battles, God takes them over. A new birth, genuine new birth, sincere new birth, is the fundamental steps to enter, to step into a covenant with God. Abraham came into that covenant with God. In Genesis 20, verse 1, verse 7, the king of Philistines took his wife. God came in the night and said, <laughs> I will kill you now if you don't restore him his wife. Move on. Verse 5, please. Verse 5. Let's go back to verse 3 to see what time. Verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Oh, Fiku Shere. How at a dead man? Abraham didn't pray. Abraham didn't fast. He, he was the one that even told the wife, these people I know say they like women. They have had the story that when they see a woman like this, they can't sleep. And the way you are beautiful, job by me, save my life. Just tell them I'm your sister. I don't, I don't mind. They can take you. Abraham was doing it. Uh, but God said, you don't know anything. You entered in the covenant of me, I'll be looking at you. And God was watching. And the man took it. Uh, Sarah told them, I'm, I'm his sister. So the man took the wife. God came in there and said that, you are a dead man. Only kilo de alone. Kilo de kinimoshe. He said, you took the wife of that man. I will kill you now. He said, no, God, I didn't do that. He told me he's his sister. He told me I didn't know. He said he's his sister. God said, yes, I knew that. He told me his sister. That's why you took it out of your innocence. But even for that, I have shot the womb of, your, of a woman. They will never have children. But I was waiting on you whether you know that something is wrong. And he said, you didn't know that. I want to kill you. Before I kill you, I'll tell you. He said, I'm sorry. He said, okay, return the wife. Now, when you come into true position with God by new but not coming to church and doing religion, not doing switch questions and just saying, I'm doing one step and do one step. I mean, you come into God and you are fully in Him. You won't need to say it. Let any fly just move around you. You see fire. Bogwara Ogoni. Inani. Touch it. Touch it and see. That is what you become when you are positioning God. Friends, I know this thing. This thing is real. This thing is real. This thing works. But be genuinely born again, not born anyhow. 
Come into Christ and come with all of your being and stay there and see what any devil will be able to dare you. He that touches you, say, touch the apple of my eye, you will see fire, you will see trouble. You see trouble. Hear me now. To every one of my guys this morning, whoever that has touched you, calamity comes upon them. In the name of Jesus. And Galatians 3 29 says, Anyone that is in Christ is, Abra is like Abraham. So when we come into Christ genuinely, we have come into that place where God fights our battle. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And he has, in the same way, according to the promise, to enjoy the way he enjoyed it. So I want to please admonish anyone under my voice here now. You are fighting battles. Probably you have not fully come into him. Come into him and see what becomes of you. Number two, walk in obedience. Walk in obedience. Every act of obedience to God, obedience to God by reason of faith, born out of faith, moves God into the believer's situation to take over his affairs. Faith moves God to take over the affairs of the believer. And by that, the battle of the believer becomes the battle of God. And God begins to fight his battle to fight the enemy finish. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1. If you are acting diligently on the voice of the Lord God, and you observe to do all that I command you this day, he said, then the Lord your God will set you on high. He will take over. And you will be above all nations of the earth. And verse 7 says, when they come against you, verse 7, when they come against you in one way, when the enemies rise up against you in one way, I am there to scatter them. When you have obeyed, obedience of faith, you want God to take over your battle, you want to hand over your battle, the battle of your life to God, then begin to walk in obedience. Obedience of faith to every of instruction. Number three, walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God. The fear of God simply means hatred for evil and sin. That makes a man to run from it. And when a man has the fear of God in his life, he becomes endear to God. He becomes a dear personality to God. And by that, God takes him as a treasure and as a precious person. Then he begins to fight his battle. Proverbs 8.13, the fear of God is to hate evil. And that makes him to be endear to God. And then Isaiah 44 verse 3 Isaiah 44, verse 3, and verse 4. You will see when you become endeared to God, and then let's take verse 4 to save our time. Amen. Verse 4, Isaiah 43, please. 43, 43, verse 4. Isaiah 43, verse 4. He says, Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for their life. So anyone that wants you down, I will exchange your life for them. I will exchange their life for your own. Because you are precious. And that preciousness comes out of the fear of God. Let me take the last one. And then we'll rise. Number four. Engage the mystery of praise and thanksgiving. Engage the mystery of thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving and praise is a mystery of the kingdom. And among the things that this mystery does is it hands over the battle of a believer to God. Second Chronicles 20, 17 that we read before. Second Chronicles 20, 17. It says, you won't need to fight in this battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. It says, set yourself. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Set yourself. And when you are properly set and appropriately set, he said, you will stand still as you see the salvation of the Lord in your life. And how did they do that? Verse 22 now. Verse 22. Quickly, verse 22. He said, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon. Moab and Monsieur, which were come against Judah. 
and the Lord destroyed them, and they were smitten. 23. He says, in 23, as the Bible is speaking for that, and for the children of Ammon and Moab stood against themselves, against the habitat of Moshe, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the habitat of Moshe, everyone helped to destroy another. That none escaped. Verse, 20, verse 24. And when Judah came toward the what? Toward the water war in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth. None escaped. The Israelites, the Jew, the, the, Jew, the children of Judah never lifted a, their hand. Never shot an arrow. Never did anything. The only thing they did was that they sang praises. And as they sang praises, God stepped up, stepped out, took over the battle, and none escaped. None escaped. None escaped. Look, there is a realm wherein you don't fight battles again. You only watch as God fights for you. That realm is the realm of more than conquerors. Where you are not permitted to lose in any battle. Where anyone that rises up against you is guaranteed to be destroyed. While you watch. Each one will determine whether it will be there or not. By your choice and what you do. Rise up on your feet. No matter how big the battle is, is nothing with God. With the breath of his nose alone, he can kill everything that comes against you. Why not hand over that battle to God? Why not allow God to take over the battle? Oh God! Take over my battle from this morning. Will you lift your two hands and pray now? Lord, I hand over the battles of my life. The one I'm fighting now, the one that will come against me. Lord, I hand them over to you. Come on, lift your voice. Pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice, speak to him. Lift your voice, speak to him. Lift your voice, speak to him. Lord, I hand over the battle of my life to you this morning. Lero bredi jadia, zia balado, shkadia gade, zetalish. Oh Lord, I hand over the battle of my life to you. Mention the battle particularly you are fighting. That area the enemy has been tormenting and has been humiliating you. I hand over the battle to you now, Father. Oh, Bregade, Jaro, 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 Kerua, Zosia, Lebelede, Jade, Kero, Zotopedi, Anoma, Belo, Jadeash. Lord, take over my battle from today. In the name of Jesus. Please ask of the Lord now. Pray, Father, grace to apply myself to the demands that will make you to take over my battle and receive the grace now. And deal me with the grace. To apply myself to the demands that will make you to take over my battle, Lord, let the grace come upon me now. And do me with the grace. And do me with the grace. And do me with the grace right now, Father. And do me with the grace right now, Father. And do me with the grace, oh God, that will cause you to take over my battle. That will make me to experience, oh God, supernatural victory as to fight my battle from now in the name of Jesus. None of my enemies shall escape from today. None of my enemies shall escape from today. None of my enemies shall escape from today. Oh God, you will fight the battle of my life. You will take over the battle of my life. None of my enemies shall escape. My salvation and supernatural victory is established now. No more toiling, no more defeat. No more defeat in my life. No longer will I be defeated in battle. No longer will I be a victim in life again. Oh God, I receive the endowment. Oh God of the Spirit of God upon my life. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank him now. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lift your two hands. Grace to apply ourselves to the demands that will make God to take over our battles, that grace is lavished on each of us now. Receive it now in the name of Jesus! You are fighting on this, that's why it appears your marriage is not settled. Every time a man comes, after a little while, you make many investments to it, and then the man disappears. Why? The devil just tell, her, tell him, you married that lady, you will die before your time. Say, why? I'm not dying. 
You just need God to smash the head of that devil and tell them to, to get away. And then you are free. And hand it over to him. Stop getting bothered and getting worried. Hand it over to him and then watch as God will give you victory. I don't know who I'm speaking to now. Things have not been working in certain aspects of life. You have done everything and it has not changed. Hear me now. Today is the end of that trouble in your life. Today marks the end of that trouble in your life. Before you get home, your breakthrough is a reality. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that's happened for you, clap for Jesus. Please will be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. You are under my voice this morning. You are here to give your life to Christ. That is where it starts, it starts from. Until a man is genuinely born again, truly born again, he, he, the battles of his life cannot be taken over by God. But when a man truly gives his life to Christ, sincerely, he won't need to ask God to come over again. God is committed to always. He's watching over him. Watching over him to take over any challenge that the enemy brings into his life. There are many that are in church. Many in church, but yet to be in Christ. Is the reason why battles still touch them. You can step out now. You can exempt yourself now. You can become one that when the devil comes near, the fire will strike him, even before you know it. It's all about your decision. It's all about your decision, your choice. But when you make that choice and you make it sincerely, get ready. The devil will mark you out as don't touch him. You know, in life, the devil knows he can't come near. Those he cannot and he must not come near. And when his demons, they are playing around, around such a man, the devil will tell him, leave that man alone. Don't touch him again. Don't come near him again. Amen. And it is being born again that brings a man to that realm. When any sin is still around a man's life, that becomes the footpath that the devil uses to be able to wage war and challenge that individual. And for a man to be able to truly overcome sin and get rid of sin, he needs the help that is above him. And Jesus is the only one that can give it. I don't know who I'm sent to this morning. God wants to bring you out of those battles and give you victory and change your story forever. But all you need is first decision. Jesus, help me. Change my story. Change my spirit. Change my life. If that is you this morning, we want to pray with you. All you need to do is just show it to God. Wherever you are, can I have such individuals rise on their feet now? Jesus, I'm the one. I need a change of life. I want the battle to cease and end in my life. I've been fighting unnecessary battles, but I want the battle to come to an end. Rise on your feet right now. Jesus wants to give you a new life. Jesus wants to take over your battles and bring an end to your struggles. He wants to take over your battles and bring an end to everything that you have been struggling with. Wherever you are, standing, pick your Bible. Come to the front. Let's pray with you now. Jesus is here for you. Jesus, enough with the battles of life. Enough with the struggles. Jesus is saving lives. Don't be the only one left. Come, 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 come now, come now, come now. Come now. Come now, come now, come now, come now, come now. Nothing is working. You pray. You have gone to everywhere. They have prayed for you. They have told you to fast. You have fasted many days. You have given everything. You have done what, everything you know. Yet, life has not changed. Nothing has changed. And you are there. God has brought you to this service to give you a new experience. To change your story. To change everything that you have been experiencing. Now, come, 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 come to him now. Jesus, I need a new life. I want a new life. I want a new experience. Somebody is still seated. The Holy Ghost is telling you and touching your heart and saying, come, let me change your story. Let me change your story. They are still coming. Clap, clap better for God. Clap better for Jesus. Wherever you are, come, come, come. Don't stay back. Don't stay back. Probably you have been in church. You have been coming to this church, but you know that you are here to truly be born again. Jesus wants to give you a new life now. Amen. The second call, you have given your life to Christ before, but you still find yourself doing things that God hates, that God does not like. You have struggled, you have prayed, you have fasted, but you have not been able to overcome that thing. Now God wants to give you victory. Wherever you are, please rise and join them now. Come now, come now. God wants to deliver you from that power of sin that has kept you defeated and has kept you a victim. Wherever you are, come, come, come. Pick your Bible, run to the front, run to the front, run to the front. Church, clap louder and clap better. Clap louder and clap better. Clap louder and clap better. Probably you are invited today. 
and you told, but you have had it now, and you know that this is what I need. Come now, I want to pray for you. Praise the Lord. Now the third call. The third call. If this is your first time of coming to this church, now you are welcome in the course of the service, and then we prayed for you and we told you to sit down, but now we want to release the blessing of God on your life. And here this, when we pray for such people here in this church, within 90 days, everything about their life will take a new turn. Now, we want to pray for you together. If that is you, the first time that you are in this church, please can you rise your feet, pick your Bible, and come to the front now. Come to the front. Everyone that you are, this is your first time, you stood up in the, in the in, when you are welcome before, and then you are still there, please come now and join them. You, you stand at the, at the, behind them. We want to pray for you together. Church, clap louder, clap louder, clap louder, clap louder. Clap louder. Clap louder. Come on, clap louder, clap louder, clap louder. Clap louder. If this is your first time, don't miss this prayer. Don't miss this prayer. Because God is going to give you a turn around that your life will keep speaking about. Wait for you one minute, one more second, please. Amen. Clap for Jesus Church, they're coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Now we're going to pray for you and get ready. Your life is going to take a new turn in the name of Jesus. Now hear this. He says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? He said, yeah, no matter how terrible the captive, the captor has been, I will deliver the captive. For I will contend with them that contend with you and I will save my children. So, until you say, Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my Savior. Then, you are not a candidate for God to fight for. So, everyone in front, I want to pray now. And I'll be praying God's intervention in your life. But you're saying, Jesus, fight my battle from now. Jesus, take over my battle. Jesus, I want to fight for me and defeat the enemy on my behalf. Let me see your hand up. I pray for you now. Put, right, put your right hand up now. Put your right hand up now. Jesus, take over my battle and fight it. Now, everyone with their hands lifted, say with me, Lord Jesus, I want to hear you loud. Lord Jesus, come on. Say it very loud. I want to hear you. Lord Jesus, take over my battle from today. Defeat the enemies of my life. Right now, I hand over my life to you and my battles to you. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wash me with your sin. Wash me from my sin. Cleanse me by your blood. Deliver me from the power of sin, from the power of Satan, that I may serve you the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me. For now I know I'm a child of God. I'm born again. All things are passed away. All things are new in my life. Thank you. Amen. Keep that hand up. Father, your grace has found these ones. Let that grace keep them forever. The battles of your life, I decree, God will fight them from today. Your victory shall be established. Thank you for doing it. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Congratulations. We're expecting your testimony.